now for the Monerotopia Price Report segment. I hope everyone's doing great this lovely Saturday morning. I should be screen sharing. I don't know if you can. There we go. Yeah, so we're looking here at, yeah. um, at Monero. And uh, just to be cheeky and fun, this is, uh, you know, kind of resembles the McDonald's topping pattern. Um, but I don't think we, I don't think we have too much to worry about, man. There was a crazy wick that happened, um, uh, last night, just the price just dumped <laughs> for no reason. The price just, was it last night or uh, let's go down to a little bit shorter time frame. Um, oh, it was early. It was Thursday night. Sorry. Yeah. Thursday night price just dumped for no reason. That's what this big wick is. Let's see. We dropped 21% in a matter of like a few hours. I don't know what was happening here. Maybe some DNM vendor was cashing out. Maybe some government was covertly selling their Monero. Who knows? Price crashed. It rebounded almost immediately. At the moment, we're only down. Yeah, let's just call it. Uh, let's just call it six percent. So um, we could also take this. We could look at this relative to Bitcoin to to just get a, a better idea. If we look at this relative to Bitcoin, that we just have a wick down, but like price is still going up relative to Bitcoin. So. Yeah, who knows what happened there? I haven't really investigated it. Um, I made a little tweet where I predicted we were at like 135, and I said, hey, um, I think maybe 120. You know, I was thinking maybe we'd get down to the bottom of these lines. The fact that we didn't get all the way down here to the to the bottom of the um, the lower standard deviation kind of makes me think that this was, maybe this was organic, right? Maybe it was just someone cashing out, someone that needed to make a big sell um, rather than like maximum fear induction if someone like some nefarious entity was trying to induce the most fear possible, my thinking is they would have pushed it down farther to this level here. Um, and we would have seen price stay down there for a little bit longer. So, uh, you know, that's, that's very speculative, right? Uh, who, who knows? <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyways, things look fine. 160. Yeah. That's, that's basically our stable coin price as you'll notice for the past like two, three years. So, um, yeah, things are fine. Um, we, you know, as we had talked about like up here, this really was kind of our zone to expect some resistance. I was hoping we would have a little bit less resistance than that, but I suppose that the general broad negativity of the market of the crypto market at the moment is, um, is probably weighing on Monero's price. It, it, it's difficult to think that, that we wouldn't have some of that spillover from the Gox event. Um, you know, referencing the Gox event, there was there was something I wanted to draw out because people said, well, Gox, Gox caused the Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin price should fall. But why are other coins falling? Well, one thing that I think is still the case in crypto markets, I was absolutely convinced of it back in 2021, but I think it's still the case now. Crypto prices are leveraged up in a significant way. There's there's a lot of leverage mechanisms. For example, Tether is a leverage mechanism on the Bitcoin price. What they did originally is they had this kind of like partially reserved, you know, um, fractionally reserved Tether, where it's like maybe they've taken some money from China or some like cash source or whatever, and they would print a bunch of Tether on, on that basis. Um, or they would do like some kind of a, a trade with an exchange, like an exchange would would pledge some kind of equity to Tether and Tether would count that as quote unquote reserves and then issue a billion Tether on the basis of some kind of equity in some shitcoin exchange, right? Then they would give, they would hand that newly printed Tether to the exchange and then the exchange would, or well, I say the, we say the exchange, I'm using that in sort of this colloquial fashion. Really, they would hand it to some kind of market maker like Alameda, for example, Alameda being the uh, the um, Sam Bankman um, hedge fund that was operating on his own exchange, which was FTX. Um, so effectively, they would hand some market maker, some liquidity provider, a billion tether, and then they would they would use that tether to buy up the market, right? So then the market would go up, Bitcoin would go up, whatever some like basket of of shit coins would go up. And then they would use that to justify printing more tether. They'd say, "Oh, well, look, the the this these coins are worth more now. The exchange has more profits. That's yeah, it's, that's a justification for printing more tether. So they print more tether, hand that to the market maker, pump the market, which would be used to justify to print more tether. This was a, a leverage mechanism that was used in 2021. Um, my guess is that there are there's still a significant amount of that going on. Maybe it's not as like crazy as it was back then. The point of all that is to say that you can think of the entire crypto market, all crypto prices as sort of being bonded together due to this liquidity, due to this leverage. It's almost like a cross margin across the entire crypto market. Everything is effectively like in, in a manner of speaking, cross margin. So when real fiat 
exits the system, right? When, when real fiat currency is leaving the exchanges, that's going to have an effect on all crypto prices because, again, they're all bonded together in this kind of like cross-margin um, voodoo magic uh, methodology that they've that they've constructed over many years now. So I would like to think that it's not as bad as it was back in 21, uh, 2021. There is definitely more fiat that has come into the crypto markets via the ETF and just via becoming more accepted, etc. Nevertheless, um, there probably is real outflows on the basis of the Gox fear. And, uh, and I guess it's probably primarily, oh, and obviously the German government. So that's why you see large drops in the entire crypto market at the same time. I know that's a bit of a mouthful. I hope, I hope that makes sense to everybody. So at the moment, uh, yeah, Monero is just basically doing its thing, kind of chopping sideways here. We had some resistance. Uh, I would have to imagine that once this Gox fear passes, right, once, once the main problems are gone and people have had the opportunity to sell, uh, we should we should hopefully begin uh, our next move to the upside. I really am still looking at at this area up here. Any broad positivity in crypto, I, I have to think, is going to give Monero some impetus to move to the upside. I also think that the continuing development of uh, decentralized options for trading Monero should be good things for our price. Uh, that's highly speculative, of course. Um, I can't I can't tell you for sure that that's going to happen. I just we know that they have ways that they've they've hit Monero's price before. I don't. I try not to underestimate my enemy. I know that these guys are very um, <laughs> very good at uh, at finagling the markets and, and doing all kinds of uh, fuckery, if you will. Okay, so uh, we have Monero versus Ethereum. We are actually finally getting back to um, to this lower standard deviation area that that we've been talking about for uh, probably months now, I guess. So yeah, this thing should should get back up here. I still think you know the Ethereum ETF is, is coming uh, once it's live. That should um, that that might actually coincide. It's looking right now that might coincide with the Monero Ethereum price sort of um, bumping up against this area, and that will that should act as um, a kind of resistance. Uh, where Ethereum will have a, you know round two to try and um, to try and trash their relative um, try and trash Monero's price relative to how well they're doing. Um, so I guess good for those guys, or whatever. Bitcoin versus Monero. Yeah, we're actually getting into these very, very, very long-term standard deviation lines you can see here. And, and it's looking pretty good, actually. There's, I think there's a decent chance that, that Monero might actually end up um, getting back, whoops, uh, might actually getting end up getting back kind of in this area and then just like stabilizing. I think there's a decent chance of that. Again, highly speculative, guys. I don't really have like, my crystal ball is uh, in the shop right now, so I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen with the Monero price. Uh, but I can tell you what's been happening with the Monero hash rate. Um, so if you guys remember, we had this um, we had this story back at the end of May, early June, where some big botnet was taken down. So it was interesting because the the hash rate went up, and then there was like this like stark drop off. But hash rate seems to have basically rebounded. So that's kind of cool. In the long-term view of what Monero hash rate is doing, we're we're basically yeah you know we're kind of like at the at the top somewhere in the top ish. Let's sorry, let's go to a little bit longer time frame. Here we go. So from the beginning of RandomX, this is this is what our hash rate has looked like. You can see we had the sort of long bear market things drawing down, but it looks like things want to move back to the to the top side here now. So uh, I guess we'll have to we'll have to see. You know, hopefully we we do need more hash rate, guys. Like this is this is true. It would be better if we had more hash rate. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the transactions per day. So, yeah, the transactions per day haven't really been doing a whole lot in it, uh, of anything interesting. Uh, effectively sitting here around 20, 25,000. This is better than what we were doing, right? So for basically the bear market, we were below 20,000, kind of oscillating up into that range. Uh, then for 2023, we effectively oscillated around the 20,000 transaction area, had the attack or the spam or whatever. And now we're basically in, in the $25,000, or sorry, 25,000 transactions per day range. So I guess that's good. You know, that's slower than we would hope for, but it's still, it's improvement, right? So not going to complain about improvement. 